Hello and welcome to CA Technologies, CA1 how-to videos. As a system programmer, you may want to dynamically build a new TMC because you've run out of virtual volumes or need additional DSNB records. You can do this while tape processing continues across multiple systems using the new TMS Extend utility. In this video, we will show you how you can start to get ready to run TMS Extend, how you can validate the control statements you'll be using, and make sure that all of your steps are lined up to run TMS Extend. So this is the beginning on how to run a TMS Extend and how to get ready to run TMS Extend. In the JCL, the first step you're going to want to do is to run a TMS Build VR. Very simple execute program TMS Build VR with a TMS RPT80 DD statement pointing to sysout. In this first execution, we will have the sysin as DD dummy. The job, when run, runs very quickly, in this case, four seconds, and it analyzes your TMC. It tells you that it was run in a standalone mode, and it gives you the data set name of the TMC that you're currently active on. Now, some of these values are not correct, and as you can even see, the number of free DSMBs that can be removed was not even analyzed. In this case, I need to add tens of thousands of additional volumes. And I can see that my current volume ranges, I've got the 200,000 range, the 300,000 range, and part of the 800,000 range, but only from 800,000 to 825,000. So I think I need to add and finish off the 800,000 range. So I'm going to add 75,000 volumes by filling out the 800,000 range. Now my DSNBs, I currently have got over 900,000 allocated. But of those allocated, over 633,000 are free. That means my DSNBs are way over allocated. So I want to remove some of my DSNBs as well. But the number that can be removed was not analyzed. That's because I did not have an add DSNB or a delete DSNB control statement. So now that I've seen what my ranges are, and what I can add, and that my DSNBs are over allocated, and I can cut back on the number of DSNBs, I'm going to rerun the job. And to do that, I'm going to, this time, add some control statements. I'm going to do an add vol of, from the 825001 to 8999999 to fill out the 800,000 volume range. I'm also going to attempt to remove a simple 1,000 DSNBs just to get started and to see how many I could remove in total. When I run this job, it takes much longer. And the reason it takes much longer, in this case almost 11 minutes, is because it has to run the entire free DSNB chain. But in doing that, it does a much better analysis. It still has the name of the uh, TMC and the build VR, gives me my current volume ranges. It mimics back to me the control statements that I was going to use to run. Then it tells me the number of date volumes I currently have and the number of DSNBs I currently have, but it also tells me the maximum number of DSNBs I can remove. 50,000. And it shows that the new volume ranges will have the 800,000 to 825,000 plus an 825,001 to 899,999. So I'm going to add the other 75,000 DSNBs. The other nice thing it shows is how big the TMC needs to be, depending on if I have a blocked TMC or an unblocked TMC. If the TMC is blocked at our recommended 340 by 8840, 
I would currently need 323 cylinders. But I can remove more than 1,000 DSNBs. I can remove up to 50,000 DSNBs. Remember, the maximum number that can be removed is 50,000. So I'm going to run it a third time, and this time I'm going to remove all 50,000 DSNBs. I left the add vol statement exactly the way it was before, and I add, now just change the remove DSNB to 50,000. When I run it this time, it still takes 12 minutes to run. The number of DSMBs that can be removed remains the same, but I did not have any control statement errors. That means that the number I'm trying to remove is correct. It tells me that the new TMC that would have been created has this name, and you'll notice that the name of the TMC is exactly the same as my active TMC with the addition of the dot N. The new volume range is successfully added, but because I removed 50,000 DSNBs, the size of my TMC in a blocked version is down to 312 cylinders. So now I know that if I want to run TMS Extend, adding 75,000 volumes and removing 50,000 DSNBs, I can do that with a TMC allocated using ISPF 3.2 or a branch 14 with this name, a TMC blocked at 340 by 8840, allocated with 312 cylinders. Now that takes care of TMS Extend, but that's not the entire process. The next thing I have to do is to make sure that I know all of the CPUs that are going to be sharing the TMC, that are currently sharing the TMC in audit file. To do that, I run as a standalone utility a program called TMS Aud EX. Again, I have a TMS RPT81 going to sysout. I have a sysprint and I have a CPU list. Now, the CPU list initially is DD Dummy. When I run this job, he reads the audit file and he creates an output file. The output report that is created simply lists all of the CPUs that are known to share this TMC and audit. It tells me the low date and the high date. In this case, you can see that CPU A and CPU B were used back on the 11th of March, but XE90 has been used all the way up to the 14th of March because XE90 is the LPI that's still active. CPU A and B, those machines are shut down and will be shut down when I run TMS Extend live. So I want to exclude CPU A and B. To exclude them, I simply rerun the AUDX, but this time in my CPU list, I have exclude statements written excluding CPU A and excluding CPU B. And that tells me to exclude these CPUs. If I've coded them correctly, the job will simply be rerun, and this time I will have my control statements processed. And when I look at CPU A and CPU B, and you scroll to the right on the screen, you'll see that those two CPUs have been excluded. That means that those two CPUs do not have to be active when I run TMS Extend. You only want to exclude CPUs that are where the CPU itself is not going to be active. The CPU is going to be shut down when you run TMS Extend. In this case, CPU A and B will be shut down. I don't want to include them. That takes care of the control statements that I'm going to need to run TMS Extend because both Build, VR, and the AUDX utilities are invoked by TMS Extend. Now, that's still not completely sufficient. Another thing I need to test is that my TMS R init is correctly set up. The way to tell that TMS init 
that TMS R init can be executed as a started task is to run it. If it's not defined in your Sys1 proc lib as a valid proc, you can copy it from the CTAP JCL library that was supplied with CA1. To check to see if TMS R init is correctly set up, you simply execute TMS R init with a PARM, and it's spelled PRM equals status. That is simply a way to test that it is ready to go. If everything is set up correctly, TMS R init runs as a started task. It starts and ends within the same second, and the return code should be 00. zero. If TMS R init starts and stops, and it's correctly defined, then you're ready to go. TMS R init needs to be run as a started task because TMS R init is going to be run on all LPARs that share the TMC and audit. Now that is still not everything. One last thing to test is to see whether or not you can actually rename the TMC. In order to rename the TMC, the easiest way to validate it is to simply run a very simple little IFBR14 with a single DD statement pointing to the name of your active TMC, not the .n version, but the active TMC. But run it with the disk equals old. If you run this job, what will happen is if anything is allocated to the TMC currently, because it's a disk equals old, it'll get a contention. So in this case, I can't run my branch 14 because somebody else has got the TMC allocated. So let's find out who's got it allocated. The easiest way is to do a display GRS comma contention. And that will show you what's in contention. Here I can see that on XE90, I've got my CTS address space and my branch 14 job. And my branch 14 is waiting for exclusive and the CTS has it with share. That's because I forgot to shut down the DBS subtask of my CTS address space. So I will issue the modify command to stop the DBS subtask. Soon as that subtask is run, the T branch 14 executed and everything is fine. So that reminds me that I need to stop the DBS subtask prior to running TMS extend. So what have I accomplished? I validated my control statements for the TMS build VR to add 75,000 volume records and remove 50,000 DSNBs. I validated that I can put an exclude statement in for CPU A and B correctly. I validated that my TMS R init is set up and ready to run. And I found out that my DBS subtask must be stopped prior to running TMS extend. And that once my CTS extend is finished, I can restart the DBS subtask. So I think now I'm ready to go with a live TMS Extend, which will be in the second video.